welcome back design squad and in this video in actual noob to master series video i'm gonna show you how to do a smart checkbox list and by that i mean it's exactly what you're seeing right now on the screen which is basically imagine that we have some sort of scenario and interface where users are able to select multiple options they're able to select all, they're able to clear it, they're able to unselect and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and create conditions to make this happen so that, let's say, when you prototype things, you can actually implement this uh, type of approach. And some instances, let's say, users might select just a few. If they select all, all of it have to be selected. If, let's say, you clear, all of it has to be cleared. If, let's say, you unselect something, select all has to unselect and so forth. So it's a big map of different interactions which depend on each other and so let's go ahead and using a sketch to actual plugin craft all these items in actual from this sketch as you can see right now and then start prototyping boom and so I set up all the objects in action as you can see and all of it is now editable it's almost pixel perfect but at this point because we're gonna prototype rapidly it doesn't really matter so what I'm gonna do next is, as you can see, it's only rectangles, which are checkboxes. I would need to replace them into actual checkboxes so that we can actually target them dynamically in Axure. And so if you remember from my previous videos, it's as simple as just uh, dragging in the one of the widgets from the library and then just giving it a name, let's say. And then you can style it as you wish. And so as you can see, we have a button size on the left hand side. And I can, let's say, go and check what's, it's 32, so we need to make my button as well 32. I can change alignment if I want to, but no, it doesn't really matter at this point. I can increase the padding of the text, as well as change the text size, so sort of to match exactly what we have. And as you can see, I have Helvetica new fan 16, and then I'd want to replicate exactly that uh, styling. And boom, all of it is now dynamically created and all of it is, as you can see, checkable. So I can check it in if I want to. Simple as that. What I want to do really right now is to give it a name to every single one. So this checkbox is select all and I can also plus plus it and then I can say plus plus option one. Cool, what do we do next? And so if I preview, you're gonna see that it works, but it's not dynamic enough as I want it to be. So first and foremost, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a clear button because that's the easiest option, really. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag the hotspot. You don't have to, but I just like to make a space bigger and purely from mobile perspective, because as you can see, it's a prototype for mobile. That's a no brainer. Add new interaction on click and I'm gonna go ahead and find set selected checked and that's exactly what we're gonna do so I'm gonna select every single one of them and select it to false and you can also you know copy add new actions as well and do it for every single one false and I'm just gonna replace only the recipient just check that it's all false. As you can see, I have gonna have six statements for each of these. I might just make a big copy and then just replace third option to false, then fourth, and then lastly, fifth. Boom. And now if we test it, we preview, you're gonna see that it's gonna work pretty well. So it doesn't matter which ones I have enabled. If I click clear, the all are just gonna be cleared out. That's simple as that. So one, one use case is already covered, which is pretty good. And now the next case, what I would do is select all, which is basically the reversal of the other one. So I would just go ahead and add new interaction on selected change, or you could actually pick on selected or unselected. Well, I want on selected. That's exactly what I'm after. And if it's selected, we want all of these other bits pre-filled, right? So we can just go ahead and again, select option one to be true and option two to be true. And exactly what we did with the other option, but in reversal so that it's actually true. And true means it's checked That's basic variables for you. Boom. And that should be done. Let's test it out. 
let's see what happens. If I select it, boom, all of them are selected. How amazing is that? And I can just clear it, select again. But now if I deselect it, the unselected should become invisible. But also if I unselect it, just like clear, all of these should be cleared out. So what I can do as well is to create another case and it's not going to be on selected in this case it's going to be on unselected and add all those bits but with a false statement instead of a true statement kaboom and let me just falsify everything all you need to do because i just copied pasted it in of what's above i just need to change the variable outcome value which is boolean and boolean is basically true or false that's my basic understanding of variables and that's it now as you can see we have two states one is for selected one is unselected and then it's going to affect everything else just like clear button did let me demonstrate selected all all selected unselected unselected amazing so it works pretty damn well apart from now we want to add a condition which is a bit more complex a bit more custom so let's say if users select all but then unselect something it basically has to then be you know taken and and made into unselected option so let's do that so what i can do is attach a conditional statement which is basically this for example on unselected so a new interaction on unselected so every time we unselect the checkbox we can just set selected all into false and that's gonna toggle it into a different state so let me demonstrate it really quick and it might not work because i might know what that there is a bit of a deep underlying loop right now but look at this so if i select it and then i select it everything unselects and that's because we forced that unselected state so we basically said now if i untick this it's gonna force this one to unselect it and since we told it if it's unselected take all of these out then you know it becomes a bit trickier and so we might need to redo that unselected option if this is okay with you that's totally fine however by me i, I still want to have that flexibility and so i'm gonna go back in this checkbox i'm just gonna delete that demo which i showed you before we can always add to it but you're gonna see that now if I preview and I have that statement defined like so and I unselect it, select it all becomes clear again because I manually overrid it. And now I just need to add the same logic to any of these five options below the selected all. So what I'm gonna do is just copy that, paste, 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 paste. Boom, simple as that. And now let me demonstrate. So let's say if I have selected all, but now I just unselect one of them, selected all are not present. If I select it, it's all present. You can go as in depth as you wish. You can also add more conditions, but be careful not to create infinite loops, just like I did before. I wanted to show you what it would look like if you would just have one switch, let's say, for whatever reason. But if you have that complexity, you might want to leave it quite simple like so and allow users to simply you know, select what we want to and play with it and, and explore and see exactly if it sticks via user testing and, and, and trying to get feedback that way. As per usual, give a like, subscribe to his channel, share with a friend who's learning UX prototyping, Axure and, you know, high fidelity stuff. And as per usual, I'll see you next time.